And now it is my pleasure to invite our pastor, our spiritual leader, to share this morning's message with you. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, spiritual family, please put your hands together and welcome our beloved Reverend John Scott. Thank you, Sandy. Morning, family. I love when Sandy said this morning, it's the first day of Christmas. Uh, and it is indeed. Uh, you know, uh, I just want to welcome you because you could have chosen to be anywhere this morning, but you have chosen to be here on the first day of Christmas. And as I mentioned, every day is Christmas. Or as we say in Jamaica, every day at Christmas. So welcome and welcome to those who join us on the World Wide Web. I, the festive season starts, I, I guess, with our celebration this morning. But for, for weeks, we have been having advertisements. This, the whole flurry of shopping and advertising and promotion of events and goods and services has begun. I, I, we even had a Black Friday. We don't have any Thanksgiving in Jamaica as per the American Thanksgiving, but we had a Black Friday nevertheless, um, which I find very strange. But you know, if it happens in America and they sneeze, we catch a cold out here. So as the festive season approaches and we are bombarded with all these ads, um, I, I had this joke which I, I found about six years ago and I, I want to share it with you again. I shared it about five or six years ago. Um, it's an ad that appeared uh, in the Atlanta Journal around Christmas time and it read, single black female seeks male companionship. Ethnicity unimportant. I'm very good looking, a girl who loves to play. I love long walks in the wood, riding in your pickup truck, hunting, camping, and fishing trips, cozy winter nights lying by the fire. Candlelight dinners will have me eating out of your hand. I will be at the front door when you get home from work in the evenings, wearing only what nature gave me. Call 404-875-6420 and ask for Daisy. I'll be waiting. The name Daisy is what caught my attention at the time I read that joke because that was my own mom's name and I wondered whether this Daisy had any takers. I also wondered if she was so hot, how come she was the law of attraction hadn't supplied her with Mr. Wright already. Anyway, I'm here to tell you that Daisy had plenty of applicants and some didn't even have a car, let alone a pickup truck. The day the ad appeared, some 15,000 men found themselves talking to the Atlanta Humane Society about an eight-week-old Labrador retriever. <laughs> Eating out of your hand. I have always been a dog lover, and when my 18-year-old Rottweiler passed away in, in, in 2000, I didn't replace her. So for the past 17 years, I've been without a dog. Then, for some reason, earlier this year, I felt a dog coming on. And everybody around me seemed to have been getting puppies, and I've just felt that urge. So I started visiting the JSPCA the, you know, the, um, to, to see if I could find a rescue, to see if there was one there that spoke to me. And I would visit every, every now and then, every couple of weeks. Well, in May, our admin professional, Janet Morris Henry, was in my office and overheard me on the phone to the JSPCA inquiring if they had any new arrivals. When I hung up, she asked incredulously, Reverend, are you interested in, 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 uh, in acquiring a puppy? So I said, yes. She said, you won't believe this. This morning, Henry, that's her husband, asked me out of the clear blue, are we going to give Reverend John one of the new litter of puppies? Of course, I asked, I, asked, I asked him who told him Reverend John even wants a dog. And of course, the answer is the one man told him. Long story short, Janet and Henry gifted me a beautiful white puppy with a bronze and browned muzzle and matching amber-colored eyes. I named her Emoji, and she has just put her paws into my heart and taken over my life. And I don't have a pickup truck, but my car is covered in short white hairs that I, I spend more time brushing the car than I do brushing her. It, it, but she's a joy. So you know, friends, 
when you have something in consciousness, the law of attraction brings you even more. So I shouldn't have been surprised that uh, a friend of mine who lives abroad emailed me recently, already inundated with preparations for having visiting family for Christmas, and she don't like Christmas. She's one of those people, you know, I don't like Christmas. She said, I don't do Christmas, and already I am dog tired. <laughs> That's an interesting phrase, I think. Dog tired. Worth investigating, worth examining. For you see, friends, dogs don't work, in inverted commas. Even dogs that have been bred as so-called working dogs, used for herding or sniffing or rescue or as seeing-eye dogs, don't think of themselves as working. They don't even worry about being paid. They simply do what they do with wide-eyed, unceasing abandon, whether it be tasks they have been trained to do or just simply digging up the garden or chasing their tails, both of which emoji does absolutely ferociously and ceaselessly. For dogs, as we say in Jamaica, for every dog, and in fact for all pets and all, all of nature, every day is truly Christmas. So that is the title of my encouragement this morning, Every Day of Christmas. And it is also the title of our expanded annual bazaar this Saturday on the lawns here at the temple. I don't think we're going to have any puppies for sale, but believe me, you can get almost anything else on your Christmas list. One Christmas, you know, when I was a boy, a well-meaning uncle, and he was also my godfather, my mother's brother, gave me a boxer puppy. His name was Steinberndorf Tobias Boxerbo, and he had a pedigree a mile long. We called him Toby for short. Well, the day he arrived, my dad had been working hard laying out some garden beds. Toby then worked equally hard, digging up and uprooting all the new suckers. My father threatened to dispatch him to dog heaven, along with my generous uncle, and grumbled as he, as he replanted everything. And Toby sat there watching him, wag wagging his little st stumper tail, and Toby didn't complain when he was obliged to again dig up everything the minute he was let out. I remember <laughs> my father just saying, I give up. And this is just the first day of a new dog. I want to just, by the way, suggest that if you plan to give any child, you know, a nephew or niece or a godchild, a gift of a pet of any sort, if it's even a hamster, ask the parents first, because parents invariably end up being the caregiver. No matter how fervently the children say, I will look after, I will help to look after him. Nonsense. It's going to be your responsibility. There's an amusing page from a dog's diary that could well have been written by my exuberant emoji, who is also a digger. And it reads, 8 a.m., dog food, <laughs> my favorite thing. 9.30 a.m., a car ride, my favorite thing. 9.40, a walk in the park, my favorite thing. 10.30, got rubbed and petted, my favorite thing. 12 p.m., Milk bones, my favorite thing. 1 p.m., played in the yard and did some more digging, my favorite thing. 3 p.m., wag my tail, that's, not, it's, that's ceaseless, my favorite thing. Dinner at 5 p.m., my favorite thing. 7 o'clock, got to play ball, what? My favorite thing. 8 p.m., wow, watch TV with the people, my? Favorite thing, 11 o'clock, tried to sleep in my master's bed. Not his favorite thing, but my favorite thing. We can learn so much from our pets, my friends, including finding joy in whatever we are doing at the moment and doing it with passion and pleasure. And if you feel overwhelmed with tasks this Christmas, it may be a call for you to consider that you are not engaged where your heart wants to be. Your heart wants to be somewhere doing something that is perfect for you. And, th and it's the time to create a new vision for yourself. So at the f on the first Monday of January, we're going to work at creating a new vision for ourselves as well. And I want to urge you that if you, if you uh, um, can, set yourself the intention, and you can, to attend even one class in 2019. It, research has shown that when you, you engage and you attend a class and you learn 
you feel more attached to your community and more informed. And people who are constantly learning are happier and they say healthier. So give yourself that gift in 2019. As I was writing this message, I was listening to the ever popular O Come All Ye Faithful. It, in Latin, it's Adeste Fidelis. And that carol is an invitation to come to Bethlehem to adore the child of light, who it says was born the king of angels, that is, the king of messengers. The faithful are those of us that are full of faith. And Bethlehem, like Jerusalem, is symbolic of a state of awareness, a state of consciousness. So this carol invites you, who are full of faith, to come back to the place of innocence and beginning and to celebrate the nativity of your own soul, your own birth into Christ consciousness. Put another way, when you are full of faith, every day is Christmas, a new beginning which heralds the Christ birth within you and in all your circumstances. The purpose, my friends, of observing Christmas is to honor and to resolve to emulate the one in whom God as Christ consciousness was fully manifested on earth. It is not enough at Christmas time merely to light a candle or decorate a tree and exchange gifts. These are beautiful customs uh, expressing as they do the spirit of goodwill and givingness and friendship and love. But if we do these things and forget the truth that each of us is a son or daughter of God, then, and that we too can demonstrate the Christhood that Jesus brought, then Christmas becomes an empty celebration, and we end up with all the doing, but none of the being, and we end up being dog-tired and glad when it is over. This, my friends, is the meaning of Christmas, Christ Mass. The deepest meaning is to be found in our own growing awareness of the life of God that is born in each and every one of us. But note, it doesn't happen in one place. Didn't just happen 2,000 years ago. It occurs in each of us constantly. Every time we, we attune and we center ourselves in the consciousness of the Christ, that spirit that the angels sang is born anew in the stable of your life and in the manger of your heart. So I want you just to dedicate yourselves this Christmas time to allowing that spirit to find its birth anew in you, in your home, in your heart, in your relationships. And as I mentioned relationships, and I know you're, we're going to be exchanging gifts and decorating trees and all of that, I want you to, and it's your assignment, before you even buy one gift or wrap one present, I want you to give the gift of forgiveness to someone who may have offended you this past year. I want you just to spend a little time, perhaps this evening, and just consider something that has irked you from someone, and just extend to that person in your heart, call their name silently, and say, I forgive you. That's the gift I give you this Christmas, and I give you because the Christ belongs to everyone. Can we just say together, the Christ belongs to everyone? The Christ belongs to everyone. Something wonderful is happening in me and through me right now. Something wonderful is happening in me and through me right now. To your neighbor say, something wonderful is happening to you and through you right now. Namaste. Something wonderful is happening to you and through you right now. Namaste. Something wonderful is happening to you and through you right now. Namaste. <laughs> The angels that sang the coming of the Christ represent our highest thoughts, thoughts of love and forgiveness. And just as the full inn where Mary hoped to give birth represents our full egos, which have no room for this new childlike innocence and this royal notion of truth, so if we think of our lives as that, as that, as that inn, we need to make, to make space, make space in the stable of our lives so that something wonderful can indeed be born in us and through us. Because we are called by the master to love our neighbors as ourselves. 
And we first have to understand that to do that, our true self is really an individualized expression of the God presence and God power that created us in its image and likeness. You know, Lord Krishna, who was born a prince in India thousands of years before Jesus, said, and I quote, he who perceives me everywhere and beholds everything in me never loses sight of me, nor do I lose sight of him, unquote. In a similar metaphor, Jesus expressed the same truth in the words that I quote from Matthew 10, verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without the sight of your father. So it means that every single one of us is important to the creative source that called us into being. We are here for a purpose. And that purpose is to let that light that we are warm and heal and bless and love and prosper and liberate everyone with whom we come into contact. But we cannot do it if our hearts are full with unforgiveness. We need to clear that. You know, that was the, the last thing the master teacher did before he passed on from this experience, before at his crucifixion. He said, Father, forgive them. And that, that forgiveness is really key to your experience of the beauty and the holiness and the joy of Christmas. Approaching life then with the mindset that makes everyday Christmas, all things become possible to you, even the apparently miraculous things. And that only drawback is that hardening of our hearts. And we need to find it in ourselves to do this act of, of, this act of forgiveness. I want us to conclude by reading the last paragraph, the last paragraph of Sandra's wonderful affirmative prayer on page two of our program. It reads, I rejoice, together, I rejoice and I'm grateful that I am made new today through the sacred and mystical experience of being the Christ in Christmas. I let this be so in love and in joy. And I would add, I let this be so in love and, and in joy because every day a Christmas. Can we say that? I let this be so in love and joy because every day a Christmas. My friend, something wonderful is happening to you and through you right now. Namaste.